in episode two, if you haven't seen it, Jenna Lyons talks about being disgusted by Dill. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, Jenna Lyon, stars are just like us. <laughs> Hello, my little lambs, it's Carla, and I'm here again in my kitchen today with a really great recipe from Where Cooking Begins. Today, I am making seared lamb patty with marinated halloumi. So many reasons why I love this recipe have kept it in the rotation. Number one, ground meat, great during the week, but we're not using beef, we're using lamb. Number two, halloumi, world's greatest, squeakiest, bounciest cheese. I love halloumi so much and today it's going to be marinated. Number three, this recipe is the one that cured my dill aversion. And if this recipe could kill my dill aversion, we think it could kill Jenna's too. Jenna, if you're watching, give dill a chance. The meat cooks really quickly. So what I'm gonna do is handle the halloumi first because I wanted to get as much time as possible in the marinade. Halloumi, if you've never had it, is a sheep goat cheese. It is from Cyprus. It is semi-soft and it has this very tight press texture. All the time people describe it as being squeaky and it's kind of bouncy. If you don't have halloumi, can't find it, don't have access to it, queso fresco, cotilla, ricotta salada, and we just kind of landed on this right as we were filming, probably cheese curds would be a great choice. These are torn into pieces around the size that I would like to encounter when I am eating my lamb patty. They're gonna be like a nice little textural mashup there. As far as the marinade goes, essentially this is a spice infused oil. So I've done something similar in my split pea soup video, which is really pulling on the Indian technique called tadka. But because I am starting in cold oil, this is really what a European derived chef would call blooming the spices. So I'm going to take a mixture of mustard seeds. I have brown, but you could definitely use yellow. Fennel seeds, getting down to the bottom of this incredibly adorable jar. One teaspoon. And then two tablespoons of pepitas. A couple of things are gonna happen. The seeds are going to toast and plump and get really crispy. The spices are going to also toast and they're gonna release a lot of their essential oils into the most delicious olive oil that this is going to cook in. So I went with mustard and fennel when I was developing this recipe because they're complementary to lamb. And the pepitas I chose because they get super crisp and something about it, also the size of them and the way that they're gonna be crunchy. You could definitely start to riff on this. I think caraway seeds would be an awesome substitution for the fennel or for the mustard seed. I think you could use cumin seed as well, would be delicious. Coriander, if you really wanna lean into the dill, you could use dill seed as a replacement for either one of the seeds. And instead of pepitas, you could use sunflower seeds if you wanna keep it nut free. You could also use chopped almonds or chopped cashews or I love a lamb and a peanut. All I have to do now is warm this up until the seeds are popping and then it'll be halloumi flavor enhancement time. My number one piece of advice for the marinating of the halloumi is don't snooze on the spices. So this is going to kind of be like when you make a caramel or you're roasting a big piece of meat and it seems like nothing's happening, nothing's happening, nothing happening, and then everything is going to be happening. So even though it's low heat, we're starting from cold, I just wanna be here. Just a couple minutes in, there's some sizzling happening. I'm already noticing that the fennel seeds are taking on a golden color. The pepitas are starting to take on some little toasty golden as well. And then it's the mustard seeds that really are gonna give you the sneak attack because they're so tiny and they're down there. But when they toast, they're gonna pop. There might be a flying mustard seed. <laughs> It's a thing that could happen. Toasting nuts generally, it can have a nice aroma and you can like see some goldenness, but pepitas, they plump when you cook them. And I just really enjoy that about them. And then when they come out, they also make adorable Rice crispy noises. I feel good about this. I'm cutting the heat, things are golden brown. It's still hot oil, so obviously even with the heat off, it's still cooking. And so right at the end here, I'm gonna add my Aleppo immediately sizzle it's going to change color from here no more waiting so that sizzling that you're hearing oops oh 
Oh, I lost a halloumi. So that sizzling that you're hearing is the oil coming into contact with the wet cheese. So when hot oil and water come together, they make a spitter spatter. Now I'm gonna take this lemon and just get a bunch of the zest in there as well. So this is something to do off heat just to preserve the brightness of the lemon flavor. So this is gonna be super fresh, really vibrant, really pretty. And then because the oil is still warm, it's also opening up and blooming the lemon peel. Adding some salt also here at the end, remember that the cheese itself is salty, so I'm being pretty conservative. And that beautiful orange that you're seeing is really from the Aleppo changing the color of the oil. So the longer this sits, the more delicious it's going to get. This pan has been heating up for a few minutes. There is some smoke coming off of it. It is radiating heat. I want it really, 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 really hot. Before I put the lamb in the pan, just a little bit of oil. All right, so here we go. First thing I'm gonna do, as we all know, in the kill it on the first side technique, is really hot pan and then flattening out whatever it is that you're cooking and also spreading the meat out so it's kind of in an even layer. Think of this as a giant hamburger patty. Keeping it in one piece is just gonna give me this really nice opportunity to have a giant sheet of beautifully seared and crispy brown meat. As soon as the meat goes in, it's gonna draw down the temperature of the pan. So if you need to or you feel like, oh, it already feels like it slowed down, increase your heat, which I just did, and then start looking for more visual cues. So obviously you can see around the edge that we went from red and raw to gray and cooked. And eventually as this fat starts to render, you're gonna see some pooling of juices on the top side of the patty. I didn't season the meat before it went into the pan because this is like nice and thin. I can generously season this side and that will be ample for both. Recently, I was DMing with one of my followers and I think it was for the salmon video, posted it and immediately they were in my DMs, K-I-O-T-F-S. Kill it on the first side. So if you're a fan of the channel, <laughs> you can just drop K-I-O-T-F-S into the comments and I will know that you know and you already know what I know. I'm delighted with the browning that's happening. I'm also delighted because the meat on top has not overcooked. It's still pink and really juicy and rare. So I'm just gonna start flipping my patty over in like the payoff of seeing these big, beautiful expanses of brown meat. All right, so that's done. Cutting off the heat. I like to do this in a big family style platter. I know that not everybody loves lamb, especially in North America. We have this idea that lamb is really gamey. The gaminess comes from the grass. And if your lamb is coming from Australia or New Zealand, it's more likely that it has been 100% grass fed. If you are sensitive to gaminess or you wanna give lamb another chance because we're giving dill a chance and we're giving lamb a chance, look for domestically raised lamb, which will generally be grain finished and will have a little bit less of that grassy, gamey flavor. Great, beautiful. That's it, dinner's basically ready. Completely forgot to tell you the story about the dill and why, how this recipe cured me of my dill problem. I had the idea for the seared lamb patty. I had the idea for the marinated halloumi. I wanted to throw herbs on that because it would like freshen everything up and it would look really beautiful. And I was very bored of the herbs that I had already used. I was standing in front of all the herb display and this little voice inside my head was like, you know that dill and lamb are really good together. So everybody who knew me at that time, knew that I had a dill problem and it was like a joke at work and the whole thing. So I was like, okay, fine to myself <laughs> and brought the dill home and had this mix with the cilantro and the mint. And then I made it and I ate it. <laughs> and I was like, mm, actually <laughs> the dill's really good, <laughs> which is the most like egotistical self-centered way to cure yourself of a problem. And then I like trounced and flounced into work on Monday and was like, hey guys, <laughs> I got over my dill version. Everybody's like, 
what, how, what happened? And I was like, well, I made a recipe with it. <laughs> and I liked it. And it opened up a whole world of loving dill. And now that also sent me on a journey to like get over all my food aversions. I'm still working on chicken liver. I've come a long way. So in the interest of trying new things and being fearless and embracing deliciousness, I'm gonna do something with my seared lamb patty that I've thought about so many times and never done, which is make a delicious sandwich out of it. So I have some awesome little pita and just going right into the pita pocket. I think if you wanted to do this and then like tuck a slice of tomato in there, that would be great. I'm making sure to get extra halloumi because it's my favorite. That looks fun and good. I wouldn't not drizzle this with tahini either. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. I forgot about all the spices being in here because I was so distracted and mesmerized by the halloumi. But when you bite in, you get the nice crisp sear, but then you get these little crunchy actual spices. I think what we've learned here today is don't get stuck in a rut with your ground meats because lamb is the next frontier. If feta is the great salad cheese, then halloumi is the great hot cheese. I think we've also learned that we should embrace and move past our aversions because life on earth is short. And I think that we've also learned that I'm gonna be best friends with Jenna Lyons after this airs.